What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about the cost of owning a reptile. A lot of us go out and we're ready to purchase an animal or we already have animals and there's all these costs associated with keeping and breeding and housing or whatever we want to do, whether it's a pet or for a breeder, that we need to consider. A lot of these might be obvious, but many of them could be kind of things you never really thought of as a cost. So before we get into the video, please remember to like and subscribe. I always appreciate you guys sharing if you think it's worthy, so let's keep on doing that. And I also want to show you this girl here. This is a pearl uh, Burmese python. I was going to say hypogranite, but it's a pearl Burmese python. Beautiful animal. I've had this girl for about three years. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at her towards the end of the video, but I wanted to just get that out there right away. So it's a female pearl Burmese python. Uh, Burmese Python. So let's get right into the costs. So first costs that usually come to mind when you're considering purchasing an animal is the upfront cost. So let's say this pearl Burmese Python is going to cost me $500. There's my initial upfront investment. With that I'm going to have to consider the caging. Now caging you might buy multiple cages over the course of this animal's lifetime or you might just buy one but let's say just for the video's sake the caging is going to cost us $100 to $200 for this initial caging. So that's now you have the animal, you have the cage, then you're going to have things like uh, accessories, water bowls, hides, all that fun stuff, lighting and, and things like that that you're going to pump into it. So you have your initial cost of the animal, but another $200 for, for a cage, and then another $200 or so, $100, $200 for accessories. So those are the costs that are pretty common. People think of, do I have enough money for this? Let's talk about the long-term costs that we're going to have to include in this maintenance of can we afford this animal over the course of the lifetime. So the first thing that usually pops into people's head are feeding. Do we have enough money to feed this? So let's say obviously feeding is going to be variable over the course of the lifetime, but let's say we have this one animal as a pet and we're feeding it weekly. So I don't know, call it $3 a, a mouse from the pet store and that's going to be weekly, so call it about $150 a year. That's simple. A lot of people think of this as the animal gets bigger, maybe the food item is more expensive, maybe you're spending $10, $15 a week, but you're but or $10, $15 of feeding, but your feeding is going to get less frequent. So maybe you're not feeding it weekly, now you're feeding it every couple weeks or once a month. Uh, and sometimes maybe it goes off feed. If you're breeding, you might stop the feeding for a little bit. So there's ways that the cost balances out, but let's say about $200 a year to feed the animal. Now we're going to get into some of the costs that people don't necessarily think about. So things like bedding. Um, bedding is a cost. A lot of people think of that as just like an accessory or something that goes along with it. But let's say we have this animal and bedding could be anywhere from free if we're using something like newspaper. Or it could be quite expensive if we want to use some fancy bedding like, um, I don't know, Cocoa Block or whatever the, whatever the newest trend is for some fancy bedding out there. And it's going to cost us 20 bucks. So 20 bucks a month uh, times... 12 months is going to be, call it $250 a year. So uh, so $250 a year for this bedding. And then we're going to go into other things. Now this is one that people really don't usually consider is the electric. Um, that's something that is high on my list because my electric bill is by far my most expensive cost second to feeding. Feeding is super expensive for all these animals as well. But my electric bill is expensive and it never goes away and it's always going to come in and it's a necessity for these animals. Now maybe you live in a place like Florida or somewhere down south or if you're in another country more in a tropical environment your heating costs may not, may not be as significant but mine living in New England basically I have to heat all year round and when summer kicks in I have to put some air conditioning on because it can get too warm for these animals. So that's all stuff that we need to consider as part of this cost. Um, I'm going to put a little formula on the screen so you guys can figure this out, but let's just use a, a simple example. So if we have a snake in a cage, maybe it's a smaller cage, corn snake let's call it, and we have a 100 watt bulb. So we have that 100 watt bulb and let's say we run that bulb for 10 hours per day. Well, heating costs and electricity costs is, is a pretty simple equation. Again, it's probably on the screen below me right now. But uh, it's essentially the amount of kilowatt hours that you spend per month times the amount that the electric company charges per kilowatt hour. So if we have a 100 watt bulb and we run it 10 hours per day, we're going to get that to be about 1 kilowatt hour per day. 100 watts times 10 hours is 1,000 watts divided by 1,000 to make it to kilowatts and now we have 1 kilowatt hour. So 1 kilowatt hour per day and then we have 30 days in a month. So that's 30 kilowatt hours per month. Now, let's say our utility companies charge us 
25 cents per kilowatt hour. So I don't know, it's not too, it's, uh, what is it, 750, uh, 750 a, a month, which isn't that bad so, uh, for electric. Now let's multiply that times 12 months and now we get uh, $90 a month. Who knew you were gonna get a math class in this video? So $90 a month, that's for one animal. Now if I have two, $180 a month. Obviously, the more we get, the more our setup changes, and we can kind of offset the costs a little bit, but uh, just simple calculations, if I have, you know, two lights going, or if I have ten lights going, it's going to impact the amount of cost that I have to put into this animal. So it's all good stuff that we need to consider as this final cost, uh, especially if you're living at home, if you're living with your parents, or somebody else is paying the electric bill. Uh, if you have a landlord that pays it, fantastic. But if you are a relative or family members paying for it, these are all costs that you're going to see on your electric bill as it comes up. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a hidden cost that, again, a lot of people don't really consider, but that is one of my largest costs. Then there's like this fourth cost, which is just vet bills. If the animal gets sick, I don't know, $80 to $100 just to see the vet, and then you need to spend another 50 to a couple hundred dollars on medicine to get it better. So these are all little things that we need to consider. Um, another one would be cleaning supplies. What am I buying to clean this? Am I buying F10? Am I buying bleach? All these things add up to be these little costs, these little incremental costs that can be quite expensive. So beyond kind of summing all this up, beyond the initial upfront cost of the animal, you know, we're talking another, I don't know, call it 200 to $500 a year per animal. Now, I want to relate this back to breeding because a lot of people, at least I've seen on social media, you'll get the occasional people complaining about price or you'll get the occasional breeder saying, well, I'm going to drop my price to nothing and, and I think everybody should afford these animals. Well, there's a huge investment that goes into these animals and once you crash those prices and you crash the market, it makes it more difficult for me to breed things and make it profitable not to the point where i'm actually getting a job and money out of this but profitable to the point where i can even support my hobby so what happens is now i'm going to decrease my my amount of reptiles because i cannot i can no longer afford to keep them and sell because every little bit of energy that goes into this is going to just suck from the budget so this is before you pay yourself so if you are a breeder you have to consider all these factors is what is this costing me per year versus what I'm making. If you're trying to make a business out of this, you really, really have to understand the economics of it and understand what your just kind of your fixed overhead cost or fixed and variable overhead costs. You know, what is this going to cost us per year just to breed animals? Um, now, if you have a good job or you're just doing this because you like them, you probably won't have a ton of different animals. And, and there's ways to save costs. You know, that's why I use racks because my, the heating element in the rack is only anywhere from 8 to 10 watts. So for one bulb, I can have 10 slots in a rack or I can have heat tape and heat pads. So heat pads are a very economical way to save on things like electricity. Um, you can use things like newspaper, which are free. If you have larger collections, you might be buying bedding in bulk. So instead of buying that one little bag because you have one or two animals, you might be buying the giant bag, which if you had one or two animals might last you the year. Or if you have, you know, uh, 10 reptiles, it might last you the month, but it goes a lot further. So as we get more into the breeding aspect and making this a business, uh, we do have to consider what the cost of owning that reptile is. Every square foot or every square inch of my breeding room is a dollar value. Now, I enjoy these animals. I will never get out of reptiles. But at the same time, I have a number that kind of is at its max. I'm supporting myself. I don't make a huge profit. Anybody who tells you they're going to make a living breeding reptiles um, either hasn't been around long enough or they maybe drop some serious cash and they're getting in big with something. I, I don't know. I, I've never seen somebody turn a huge profit making reptiles. Um, even even large breeding facilities like, like New England Reptile Distributors or BHB or Prehistoric Pets, a lot of them, they, they make a profit from breeding reptiles, but there's also other things that go into it. They do tours and, and, uh, and, and other, other facets that... that allow them to continue to operate at that capacity. 
Um, so this is all stuff you need to consider, whether you're going to get into reptiles as a pet or whether you're going to get into reptiles as a breeder. You know, these are all the costs you need to consider. Now, if I didn't cover them all and I know I haven't, please drop some comments below. Let me know what other costs I missed because I'm calculating it all, but those are the big ones that I really focus on are my electric, my feeding bill. I mean, my feeding bill, and there's people that have it way more expensive than this, but I spend about $10,000 a year on feeders. My electric bill, another ten to fifteen thousand dollars on my electric my gas my utilities my you know all of this stuff is taking up money before i even make a profit myself so that's kind of the driver on some of these costs on these reptiles so when you're trying to talk a breeder down in price you got to consider that that breeder may be have a fixed cost because of it um, you know they have to they have to be able to make a profit and make it semi worthy for them to do it um, and I hate to use the term profit because profit from the business standpoint doesn't necessarily mean money in my pocket it just means I'm paying my bills and I get to do the things that I enjoy so hopefully this guys gave you or hopefully this video gave you guys a different perspective on the costs associated with a reptile um, hopefully I didn't bore you guys I try to show you the snake at first let's take another closer look at this girl here I'll get off the camera so you can take a look here but she's absolutely gorgeous i produced her here myself she's one of my favorite burmese pythons and she she just drank water before i pulled her out so she's drooling all over me um but uh yeah again a three-year-old or so um pearl burmese python i really like this girl i'm gonna start showing you guys some burmese pythons i have some good videos coming up uh, i'm gonna do something on thermostats hook training how my breeding year is going i've had some great success this year so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you're going to keep enjoying some of the new ones i'm going to put out if you have a video topic that i haven't covered or you want to see please post it in the comments if it's an old video topic maybe i'll update it because it's kind of might be a couple years old at this point and i have a little bit better camera gear and stuff like that so again i appreciate all you guys watching subscribing giving the thumbs up and dropping comments thank you all we'll keep it moving